Hello, I'm Anastasia Armbruster, a pharmacist in St. Louis, Missouri at St. Louis College of Pharmacy. And I'm happy to bring you this VTE prophylaxis quick, quick tip video on behalf of American College of Cardiology. In this video, we will focus on the acutely ill medical patient. We'll do a quick dosing overview. We'll discuss VTE prophylaxis in obese patients and briefly discuss agent selection. Current available agents for VTE prophylaxis in the medical patient currently include low molecular weight heparins, unfractionated heparin, and one direct oral anticoagulant, rivaroxaban. Standard dosing is included on this slide. We'll also cover renal dosing for each agent. For enoxaparin and heparin, Enoxaparin at a creatinine clearance less than 30 should be reduced to 30 milligrams daily. Heparin is a great option for those patients who have limited renal function or are on dialysis as there are no recommendations for patients with renal dysfunction. Fondaparinox, um, while not used greatly in clinical practice for the acutely ill medical patient, is less of an ideal option for patients with renal dysfunction. Um, even at, with patients of a creatinine clearance of 50 to 80, um, there are dosing recommendations to reduce the dose um, to 1.5 milligrams sub-Q daily. And then for those patients with a creatinine clearance less than 30, the agent becomes contraindicated. And again, the drug can start to accumulate in these patients, which is why I think we see it used um, much less frequently in clinical practice. For rivaroxaban, um, this Creatinine clearance is different than um, many of the other indications for this drug, um, making it yet another instance where we need to carefully monitor renal function in hospitalized patients. So um, patients included in clinical trials were excluded at 30 mils per minute for creatinine clearance. So there's really minimal data in the patient population 15 to 30. Per the package insert, you can use the standard dose up to 15 mils per minute but remember those patients less than 30 were excluded um, from the clinical trials. So let's talk about prophylaxis in obese patients. In my clinical practice, this is definitely a question that comes up a lot um, on rounds. And I will say that the data is certainly mixed. So the most recent guidelines that address VTE prophylaxis in this patient population are the American Society of Hematology guidelines. Of course, the CHESS guidelines also address this population um, however, they are nearing 10 years um, since their last update. This exact question was identified as something that needs more information. Um, and so we'll review a few studies um, that look at this exact question. So why is um, particularly heparin something that we would think needs to be adjusted in patients who are obese? So heparin is extensively bound to plasma protein it overall has a low volume of distribution and due to increased blood volume of obese patients, there is a potential for decreased bioavailability. So let's look at a few studies. Um, I already warned you that the data was mixed. Um, so this first study looked at patients over 100 kilos and a BMI of at least 40 or greater, included over 9,000 patients, and they defined high dose thromboprophylaxis as either heparin 75,000 units um, sub Q TID or anoxaparin 40 sub Q BID. Standard dose could include heparin 5,000 sub Q BID or TID, and then standard anoxaparin dosing. High dose um, thromboprophylaxis was associated with a lower occurrence of VTE um, with an odds ratio of 0.52. There was no observed increase in bleeding. And the authors also observed independent predictors of VTE to include surgery, um, male gender cancer, and um, increasing BMI. So this study certainly supports the use of high-dose thromboprophylaxis. Another um, larger study of over 5,000 patients looked just at patients with a BMI of 30 or greater and saw no difference in rates of VTE. They defined high-dose thromboprophylaxis as 7,500 units TID compared to 5,000 units TID. You'll see here that um, the BID dosing of heparin 5,000 was not allowed. 
They also, though, observed no increased rates in bleeding, which was positive. The last study, the BMI greater than um, 40, a smaller study, um, however, compared anoxaparin 7,500 units to anoxaparin 40 BID. They um, observed no difference in rates of VTE, but did note a major um, increase in bleeding with high dose heparin with an odds ratio of 1.85 that was statistically significant. So here we see that um, both patients, both populations were receiving um, high dose thromboprophylaxis, but those receiving heparin had an increase in major bleeding while admitted. So preventing VTE in obese patients, certainly something that we all see in practice frequently. There are currently no formal guideline recommendations. The data seems to be more consistent when BMI is 40 or greater. Um, remember that study of 30 saw no difference. And maybe when we're selecting an agent in this population, there's some limited data to suggest that anoxaparin 40 um, milligrams BID may be preferable. And then overall, what do guidelines say about agent selection? So we'll look at the 2018 American Society of Hematology Clinical Practice Guidelines. Um, and for parenteral agents, they give a slight preference to low molecular weight heparins over unfractionated heparin. And they discuss the benefits of daily dosing, um, not necessarily from direct drug costs, but more from patient preference and burden of administration um, while admitted to the hospital. The overall lower risk of hit with low molecular weight heparins compared to unfractionated heparin. And based on the data analysis that it may be slightly more effective overall for VTE prevention. And so again, that's the recommendation from the 2018 ASH guidelines. So just to summarize our quick tips um, for dosing overview, of course, monitor um, renal function and body weight. And these patients closely there for many agents, um, dose does need to be reduced as renal function decreases. And of course, we all know that's dynamic in hospitalized patients. For obese patients, we can consider high dose thromboprophylaxis. Um, there may be some preference to high dose um, anoxaparin. And then for agent selection, um, low molecular weight heparin when appropriate. Um, and that's from the American Society of Hematology guidelines. Thank you for your time today. And I hope you find these quick tips helpful.